Welcome to KOCE TV Channel 50. Today I'd like to take you on a walking tour of our technical facilities. Let's begin right across the street here with our studio building. This building was built in 1970, and in 1974, a wing was added to create additional space for our needs. This brings a total of 12,000 square feet that we occupy. This is one of two studios that we use for productions. Now you might recognize this set. It's used for Jim Cooper's Orange County. Besides sets, scenery, we also have cameras, lights, and other production equipment. We have four cameras like this one. On the front of each camera is a teleprompter. This lets our talent read copy without turning away from the camera. Inside each one of these cameras are three Plumicon tubes, one for each color, red, green, and blue. Our cameras still function well and are used in the studios to produce live programs such as election coverage, college credit telecourses, very popular how-to series, and Jim Cooper's Orange County. Behind the cameras are control rooms where the director selects from live camera shots and other video sources and puts them in a logical order by using a video production switcher operated by the technical director. As you know, engineering personnel must be used to operate the complex technical equipment throughout the facility. We have two production control rooms, two audio control rooms, and one video or camera control room where color quality is adjusted to meet technical specifications. As you can see by the number of knobs, this is a complex task. Well, here we are back outside again. You know, many times producers have requirements to shoot out in the field. Well, how was that accomplished? It's accomplished traditionally by big remote trucks such as KOCEs. Our remote truck is equipped with three cameras, videotape machine, video switcher, audio, lighting, and all the other accoutrements that is needed for a large production in the field. You know, like our studio cameras, our remote cameras are obsolete as well. But why is that? Well, state-of-the-art and high technology has reduced all this equipment down to very compact sizes, primarily due to production requirements in the field. Let me give an example of what I'm talking about. This equipment came on the market about six years ago. What did it replace? Many times, big remote truck like ours. It also replaced 16 millimeter film, which was widely used in the broadcast industry. But yet, we didn't sit still there. We went to more modern, smaller equipment. Let me show you that one. It's that simple. The recorder, the camera. No longer the big remote truck, no longer the big EFP package we saw. The whole thing is self-contained. Now you're not going to do football games or basketball games, but you're going to do quality documentaries and quality news production. Of course, broadcast quality camera recorders should not be confused with home video equipment because of the vast difference in quality. You know, there are several different techniques used to videotape television programs. Some productions are recorded straight through, as if they were live. Others, including most telecourses, consist of dozens or even hundreds of elements from the studio, field production, and other sources. These must be edited together in what we call post-production. Usually a work copy of the program is assembled on inexpensive offline editing equipment. The editor carefully puts the various scenes in order, adds narration, music, and sound effects. When finished, the program is screened by the producer and the content approval committee. If changes need to be made, it is a fairly simple task, as each scene is identified by a time code number, which aids in minimizing the time needed to assemble the final program. The editor's decisions are recorded on a computer disk, which is delivered to the online CMX editor, where the high-quality copy will be assembled. Here in post-production, the offline editor's list of scenes is examined by the computer and its operator, and the program is auto-assembled using this sophisticated computerized editing system. A team of talented professional personnel use state-of-the-art one-inch videotape recorders, switching, and audio equipment. This process maintains the highest standards of quality needed for producing programs for national release. Our most recent telecourses, Faces of Culture, Photographic Vision, and Marketing were produced using this process. 
Generally, most television productions today rely on this type of computerized editing, a marriage of video and computer technology. Television production and broadcasting require a number of behind-the-scenes support surfaces such as our graphics department where camera-ready artwork for production, publications, and advertising is prepared. Part of our graphics department is the photography division, which produces photographs and slides as they are needed. Many of our graphics and titles are produced by electronic means. Our Vitafont character generator is sort of an electronic typewriter which produces most of the lettering that you see on our programs. You know, in the last 13 years, we have recorded tens of thousands of tapes, and about 8,000 of these tapes are still stored in our tape library today. Another behind-the-scenes activity is scheduling. Television broadcasting and production require extensive coordination of personnel and equipment. What happens to a program when we finish producing it? Well, in some cases, we simply broadcast the original videotape. Telecourses and how-to programs often require that copies are made for national satellite distribution on PBS or for broadcast on other stations. In a typical year, we make about 3,000 of these dubs. Much of our dubbing is done in the middle of the night, when the equipment is free from other uses. Once dubs are completed, they must be shipped to the end user. Now our shipping department must route these tapes to their destination by the most economical and yet expedient means. Over the last 10 years, KOCE's tapes have regularly been sent to over 600 stations and institutions throughout the world. We also receive tapes for broadcast and production from outside sources, which must be processed for use. Now, so far, we've examined some of KOCE's production processes, which prepares programs for our air broadcast schedule. This is our master control room. Here is where it all comes together for broadcast. The operator on duty must switch between the various program sources, load videotape, film and slides, make recordings from the satellite, and operate the transmitter. This job requires several different skills including manual dexterity, attention to detail, an aesthetic sense as well as the ability to operate and understand the vast amount of technical equipment. In mass control, little has changed since the equipment was installed in 1972. Most of our broadcast schedules play back on two-inch quadruplex videotape machines. These machines, like our cameras, are about 20 years old in terms of electronic technology, but we can't afford to replace them yet. Most of our PBS program schedule is received by satellite and recorded on videotape for later airing. We can receive and record three programs simultaneously. We can also put PBS programs on the air live when required. Now our microwave system sends our signals to the transmitter in La Habra. The transmitter is operated by remote control and we only go up there for equipment calibration, maintenance, or of course an emergency. You know, you may wonder why KOCE's transmitter is not on Mount Wilson, along with most of the transmitters in Southern California. Now, it just wasn't technically possible. The Federal Communication Commission required us to draw a 20-mile circle around Mount Wilson and find a mountaintop outside of that circle where existing home receiver antennas were already aimed. This didn't leave us too many choices. As a result, we are transmitting from a 1,200-foot hill on La Hopper Heights, just about 19 miles north of the studio. This site gives us some reception problems, but it was, and still is, the best choice available. This is the other end of the microwave system that you saw on top of our studio facilities in Huntington Beach. Here are signals received and fed to our transmitting plant. The facility consists of a steel building and a 254-foot tower. Inside are two 30-kilowatt UHF transmitters. Both are over 20 years old and were bought as used equipment in 1972 and again in 1976. They too are beyond their expected lifespan and consume more electrical power than their more modern counterparts. Each transmitter uses about 128,000 watts of power. This is a Klystron amplifier, our final power tube. We have two Klystrons in each transmitter at a replacement cost of over $32,000 each. Once a week, we must send an engineer to the transmitter to verify that the equipment in Master Control is operating the transmitter properly. The engineer must also inspect the systems which operate the transmitter, 
including high voltage, water cooling systems, and power control. Periodic maintenance must also be performed, often at night, when KOCE is not broadcasting. Like our studio, KLCE staff of engineers assembled all of the equipment that you see and were responsible for the construction and continued operation. After the transmitter generates our visual and oral, or picture and sound signals, they are fed through a system of copper pipes to our filter plexer where they are combined into one signal and fed up the tower to our antenna. Could we have a different antenna which would deliver a better signal to our audience? Well, we think so. Studies are now underway to determine if our signal would be improved with a new antenna. We do know that our signal is weak in some areas. One of our biggest problems is the fact that home receiver antennas outside of central Orange County are simply not aimed at our site. From camera lens to transmitting antenna and all the steps in between, that's what you've seen on our tour today. I hope you've enjoyed it. You know, the technical facilities and the people who operate them are only part of a large team that brings you quality programming seven days a week on Channel 50 KOCE.